we want to say thanks to David Seymour. David Seymour has finally, you know, every time there's like a mass shooting in America, they go, this is not the way to protest or now is not the time. Or, and you always ask the question, well, when is the time? How, That's when, when, so do, predictable. when do we know? When is the time to protest? Please, someone, please, someone educate us as to when is the best time to protest? Well, happily and luckily, David Seymour has filled that gap. And he's decided to tell us all when the best time to protest is. Let's have a listen to the story from last night. Oh, actually, this is from Friday. And I just also wanted to acknowledge the um, strike for climate change. That's what it's all about. Let's have a look. Raise the ire of student climate protesters by telling them they should have been at school instead. Tens of thousands marched in towns and cities across the country today, demanding action on climate change, the war in Gaza, and on treaty rights. Alexa Cook reports. <laughs> Taking over the capital's Golden Mile, these students are skipping school for a cause. Keep your carbon in the soil. Demanding more climate action from those in power. It is an issue we are not willing to turn our backs on clearly. Today we have shown that to this government. 20 protests were held around the Motu. With crowds filling Auckland streets. I can from from the other side of town, Joey. I can sense your pride welling up in you. I can just I can feel it mm. through the screen. Yep. And marching through New Plymouth. I feel responsible. I feel the consequences are happening. I care about my world. The school strike for climate is a global movement that began in Sweden in 2018. Although in New Zealand protests now include a wide range of issues, including honouring Te Tiriti, <laughs> the fast tracking of legislation and a call to free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Someone who isn't on board with students taking time off school to protest is ACT leader David Seymour. If they really care about the issue, they should protest on a day without missing school. How do you feel about... Oh, so, get... But so, so David Seymour has given us the criteria because he said, quote, so remember what he's saying is they don't care because what he says is if they really cared about an issue, they should protest on a day without skipping school. Now, I, I'll, I'll guess as well, if you were to ask him about freezing works going on strike, you know, a, a work, a bunch of workers going on. You might hear from his mouth, if they really cared about an issue, they should protest on a day they're not at work. That feels like it would have the same vibe to it. So basically, <laughs> basically, we're we're all blessed now that David Seymour has given us the rules. Finally, someone as to when to protest, and and what he's saying is, when you've got some spare time and you don't have another commitment that I deem more important. Uh, there's more to play, Chewy, but I can see you bubbling. So have a crack, son. Yes, they should have definitely ordered us this climate strike on Saturday. The mm. march to um, to Parliament would have been very effective to shout at a building that was empty. Yeah. What an idiot. Yeah. What an absolute idiot. Uh, let's go to another really successful protest. Um, you know what? The Springbok protests uh, were really inconvenient to the people going to the rugby. Yeah. Um and, and it really so if they could head their protest on on a day that there isn't a rugby game on, well, that that'd be great. Yeah, but no, 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 because if they protest if they, is inconvenient. Yeah, no, but the thing is sure, if they if in, in nineteen eighty one, if they really cared about the issue, they would protest on a day without rugby. I mean if they if they really cared about it, that's mm. what they'd do according to mm. David Seymour. This this comment from him was so like i was waiting for it i was he's gonna say it he's gonna say it that they should have chosen a different time to protest that they were just trying to wag school and and look the media is slightly to blame here as well because they, they use the term they're skipping school fuck no they're not skipping school it's an organized mood like skipping school is bunking off fourth period to go to mcdonald's <laughs> or smoke weed down the back of the fucking bike sheds or something this isn't skipping school these guys have to wear the the consequences of what people like david seymour are setting in stone now like this this idea that the teenagers oh they're too young they don't know 
um, you know, they're not they're not um, doing it in the way that they should. And once they're older, they'll get it, and all of this sort of stuff is so demeaning. Like, if I was organising one of these strikes, I'd do it again. I'd do it again, more and more and more. Like every time he opens his trap and says, "No, not like this," like, these stupid kids, do it again. Find, uh, do it to his house. I don't so know. You, so Saturday, go to his house. So you're saying he they're learning from negative reinforcement. They should do the opposite of what David Seymour says. Oh, look, That's if, if someone tells you to stop doing the thing, then the only answer is to do more of the thing. <laughs> let's um let's get to the end of this because the uh, some of the students give uh, give David Seymour their thoughts as well. Missing school. How do you feel about David Seymour uh, telling you all to get back to school? Mind your own business. Get back to your job. He has no idea what's going on outside of his office. In Taranaki, they even created a new chant for him. Organisers say this is the largest protest of its kind in New Zealand to date. And it's because all these young people are feeling so disconnected from the new coalition government. They feel powerless and voiceless and say those in charge are ignoring the climate crisis. And the people who are passionate about it. The environment is really important to us. How are you feeling being amongst all this? Um, it's kind of scary but I think it's really important as well. Students were joined by parents and grandparents too. We're grandmothers who really care about the future of this world for our grandchildren. Why are you both here today? Uh, for my children's future. And I've got a child over there. She's concerned about her future. A future that's looking increasingly bleak for them, but still worth fighting for. Alexa Cook, News Hub. And just think about what these kids are doing. They're talking about, um, you know, putting legislation through to under urgency they're talking about palestine they're talking about the climate i mean like and, and what politician whether you agree or disagree with their thing would would want to hinder teenagers from getting involved in those hot button issues imagine the 35 year olds that they're building when they're 17 and they're doing that mm -hmm. i mean what yeah. politician would go would like to go it's like if you were a, a, a very good musician and you had these young people who were born joining a band and they were playing thrash metal something you hated would you go no nah, stop it no get away no nah. or would you go i to yourself i d don't like your music but i need to encourage you in the skill set that you're showing to move on to be an even better musician in 10 years from now it's just it's fascinating it's fascinating Here's a question for you, Pat. When was yep. the first time you went on a protest march? How old were you? Not at school. Probably university. So probably 18, 19. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think and it was probably over protest... university uh, fees from memory, maybe. My first protest march was oh, probably the Urawera raids. So mm -hmm. I, I would have mm -hmm. been in my early 20s right. uh, before I went on a march. Now, I was politically active when, when I was a teenager and that sort of thing, but certainly not to the point of going on a march. Um, and I think the fact that Seymour's come out so strongly, dumbly, but strongly against them, uh, just illustrates a point that a right-wing government is terrified of a politically active um, teenager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if they get politically active, they'll stay politically active. And I, I think the... The, the comment about these kids feeling disconnected from the current government, that that is something uh, that we we really need to look on. Like, I think if you look at the UK now, you can see there's a whole generation of people that were disconnected from their government that thinks the government doesn't give a fuck about them. Yeah. Um, and if that continues, and I, I think luckily here in New Zealand, we don't have the, the system where that will continue. You know, we change quite often. But these kids need to to get out there and and say what what issues are important to them because mm. they can't vote. We won't let them vote. So yeah. how else are they going to communicate what's important to them? Like yeah. when it comes to climate change, these kids have to live with the consequences of decisions being made now and that have been made before they were alive. Now, is this the generation that is going to have a shorter lifespan for the first time? I think there's a, there's a really good chance of that. Mm. Climate is changing that quickly. 
So, yeah, maybe they go on a march every now and then. Maybe it needs to escalate from them. But, like, if that's the response that they're going to get from a government, oh, you should do it on your weekends, then that's just, A, stupid, B, disrespectful, and that doesn't acknowledge any of the things that they brought to the table as being important to them. Very good, sir. Well done. Well spoken, Chewy. Hear, hear. Um, oh, all right. The, the other thing, sorry, <laughs> uh, the, there was a thought there that I was going to lead with, and then I've got it. The idea of kids going to school is to learn something, right? Do you think those kids learned something? That yeah, day? I yeah, of course. You know, how many skills have been learned there? How to organize, you know, how to be, be politically active. Like, that there is a process, there is actions that you can take to affect change that is an incredibly important lesson so yeah they weren't in school doing formal learning but they were learning